Hi Priya, good evening. Good evening. Well, I have with me today Priya Shah. She is the general partner of Tia Ventures. Tia Ventures is a IP led investment firm, venture investment firm with a pretty high focus, almost a dedicated focus on climate tech investments. Now, there's a clear reason why I wanted to talk to her today, even though there are a lot more things that she can, I'm sure she can talk about. Um, there's a clear reason, and that is she brings to the table a pretty unique combination in terms of background. For quite some time, she had been working on the impact investment sector, which also included a good amount of social investments. And of late, she has been doing a lot of uh, work and efforts into IP-led investments, a good part of which also contains deep tech. So I thought, you know, this is one person who has actually had exposure to social innovations, many of which could be what I call as simple innovations, maybe Jugaad, and now is leading efforts into innovations that require a lot more research, uh, some of them being deep tech. So the question I have for her, and that is going to be to a large extent the, the theme for the next 10 minutes or so is about the, the, the comparison and the evaluation between simple tech, simple innovations, and the deep tech and deep innovations. So Priya, welcome. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me um, and happy to dive right into your question. Uh, so, you know, from our perspective, deep tech essentially takes in hardware components and processes which are using cutting edge science and technology. And in the case of climate, it's really to mitigate climate risks. So namely to decarbonize industrial processes, uh, decarbonize mobility, fuels, buildings, energy distribution and materials. Uh, so there are very various different innovations, um, you know, in deep tech for climate. These range from electrolyzers for green hydrogen production, carbon capture, battery recycling and metal extraction, um, battery chemistries. So other than lithium, which batteries can be used um, in either EV or stationary storage, um, energy storage applications which include essentially um, innovations in sodium, zinc, hydrogen, polymer. Um, so that's in battery chemistry. And then there's also deep tech around robotics. So for manufacturing processes to automate like waste segregation and um, in recycling plants. And then also deep tech around material innovation. So packaging, textiles, building materials, et cetera. So what I was outside India, climate deep tech rather. Um, so H2 Electro is, for example, a deep tech hydrogen startup. Um, Prometheus Fuels is another carbon capture startup, um, which basically removes carbon dioxide from the air and turns it into gasoline and jet fuel. Um, and essentially, climate deep tech is usually, I would say, um, an incubation process um, in a university or venture lab with a focus on measuring the metric tons of carbon averted by the greener product or the conventional process that it's trying to mitigate. Um, given that climate change is actually a, a long-term problem, the deep tech necessarily needs to be flexible enough to adapt to changing technologies, market conditions, pricing, and business needs. Um, and because these innovations take a long time to scale up in terms of testing and product market fit and customer validation, technology readiness level or TRL, and finally revenue, um, it's really important to bear in mind that the market can look very different, um, you know, when the companies are finally commercializing to when they first start ideating. So that that in, entire time period can, can take a while. Um, I think the last piece in deep tech is kind of keeping an eye also on government regulation. So many countries have globally made commitments towards net zero in the case of climate, but policies keep changing with respect to new subsidies, tax base, corporal or industrial mandate. So I think that that essentially sums up what we look at in terms of deep tech. I think um, the last piece to mention is that, you know, there's been a lot of um, advancements in technology around what would say traditional um, investing or traditional asset light technologies. Uh, so for example, in SaaS and platforms and marketplace models, which you we could classify as simple tech. Um, but, you know, I think these are certainly applicable across various climate tech sectors as an additional software layer to the hardware or middleware climate technologies. 
but I think the bulk of carbon reduction really occurs or happens with physical products, manufacturing processes, and deep science innovation. So we need to have, um, you know, in addition to AI and ML um, sort of uh, innovations, we also need to have significant attention placed on R&D as it's, it's one of the core tenets to basically solving the climate problem. I think that's pretty well articulated. Um, that's a pretty good perspective on what deep tech is and also to a certain extent explain why it is required. A quick question around the deep tech timelines. What kind of timelines are we talking about for a deep tech to start from, let's say, uh, ideation stage to actually being implemented? Are we talking about five years, 10 years, 15 years? Is it going to be more? What kind of numbers are we talking about? Yeah, so it really depends on the technology and, um, you know, the type of application uh, in the real world. So we've seen kind of companies that are in battery chemistry taking, say, three to four years to really see revenue. And then others that are building much larger applications, say, in drone technology, aviation and others taking up to six years, seven years to commercialize. Um, and, you know, m much of the... Um, you know, sort of, I would say product testing and the customer validation is not something that always happens, you know, without revenue. So you do have paid pilots and you do have customer LOIs that can come in. And if you're fortunate enough to lock in a very strong customer, so a, a large multinational, um, you know, kind of Fortune 500 type of company that wants to see an integration of deep tech into their uh, overall business models and they don't have the ability um the sort of resources that they obviously have resources but the talent um, to actually build those then it's it's a very good segue into making sure that you as a company are commercialized even if it does take a little longer than planned i agree i think um you know no pain no gain as they say sometimes you got really goes through the pain and the timelines required to get the kind of uh, significant uh, delta that you need from deep tech. But for a country like India, which has been looking at frugal innovations, you can call it uh, Jugaad, you can call it uh, simple solutions, you can call it lifestyle changes. We have been more on frugal innovations, sustainable innovations. Do you think deep tech is something we should invest in such a big way or should we just adopt what, let's say the West is doing because they have been in a way about uh, deep tech, deep research for pretty much every other uh, technology vertical. So I know it's a very difficult question to answer in a short time, but maybe a couple of bullet points while we are on this. Why should we focus on this instead of investing in maybe less than deep tech, maybe sustainable tech, maybe um, behavioral changes? How, uh, what do you think about it? Yeah, so um, it's a good question. I do think that, you know, there are a couple of things I would say that India would really excel at if we had the funding, the patient capital, the lab space, uh, the government support, et cetera, to actually um, roll out um, investments into deep tech. So I think we have great hardware engineers, um, you know, great resources, great universities that can help train up um, uh, the, this talent. And so to, you know, with Indian Institute of Science, IIT Madras and, and others that are there in the space. So I think there's a lot of potential, um, you know, in the human capital in India to really build good deep tech solutions. And then when we look at other markets like the United States, um, Germany, Israel, and these countries are, you know, very much the leaders in deep tech solutions. Um, I think what what is the advantage of investing in it? It really accelerates, you know, the the entire impact of what what you're trying to build as a company. So um, whether it's a carbon capture solution or a battery chemistry solution, having that um, that su superior and sophisticated technology that you've spent, uh, that the company has spent time and money and effort trying to build, will significantly move the needle, I would say, in terms of, of net zero emissions, climate change, et cetera, more than something that we could just do that is more of a stopgap solution um, using perhaps more simple tech, et cetera. There's some, um, I mean, I think the climate change problem is so vast and so complex and so long-term, and it sort of cuts across so many different sectors that we need as strong as talent as possible and as, as high amounts of capital that can be in invested in this robust technologies that can help us over the next two, three, five decades. In fact, um, just to talk about um, the importance of doing it here, uh, the carbon clean solutions who are now a global leader in carbon capture, they started from India. As you know, they're all IIT guys from here. I used to keep in touch with Anirudh. 
in his early days when he was here, but as you know, they shifted to UK now because yeah. India um, was not then a deep tech country. Mm -hmm. So even though actually some of the projects are down south, so pretty close to where I am from, Chennai, so it makes all the sense to develop this ecosystem so that the brains like the carbon clean guys actually do it from here. They don't have to shift to elsewhere. Pretty mm -hmm. fine. Last question to you. So um, a couple of couple of thoughts from you on what are the key drivers or what should you think the key stakeholders, be it corporates, the government, or investors like you should do to accelerate this deep tech thing? Otherwise, you know, it could take quite a long time. Uh, we are not at a deep tech country in many of these verticals, including climate tech, but if we have to become one very fast, something got to give, something got to change. What is that? Yeah, absolutely. So I think there are quite a few specific um, inputs that are needed to kind of accelerate this transition for India to be perceived as a deep tech um, innovation company, a country for climate tech. Um, so one is that we need really strong labs that are dedicated to climate in top universities. So the U.S. does a great job with this at Stanford, Columbia, MIT, where essentially corporations are waiting outside the door of these labs uh, for the for the companies to reach commercialization stage and then for them to integrate these next gen technologies, um, which they might struggle to develop themselves. Um, as and, and these companies essentially act as a ready pipeline of customers for these labs. So I think we need to build that very strong, um, you know, commercial element here in India in our labs. I need to build more labs in more universities. That's one. The second is that we need, um, I think, a greater number of government schemes and funding to ensure that there are enough facilities um, like these labs to essentially do prototyping and lab testing. So there are a few uh, government departments like Department of Science and Technology Technology, the DST, the Department of Science and Industrial Research, DSIR, and then Council of Scientific and Industrial Research, which are good examples of government organizations that currently nurture and provide startups with access to philanthropic capital and grant, which is, you know, risk capital that can overlay the existing, the uh, additional venture capital that can come into these startups. But we need more government support and more dedicated capital um, in the budget for, for these. And then I think finally, um, well, there are two, two other things. Things. One is that we need you know, more deep tech venture investors that are willing to lengthen their investment horizons, um, you know, from say five years, seven years, all the way to nine years or ten years. So you guys have made um, a start there anyway. Sorry. Kind of. You guys are making a start there in some way or the other. Yeah, it's we're like trying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I think lastly, and in, in when we talk about IP-led, you know, innovations, which are basically you know, the filing of patents, um, et cetera. I think we need stricter enforcements of patents. Well, interesting, yeah. I mean, all those are valid points. I do not know much about the government part of it, but I think one thing I take away from the list of the wish list that it provided is the corporate um, and the financial investor segments, of which um, I would, uh, I'm actually quite fascinated by what the corporates can do, right? Because we are talking about very large corporates in India already. And many of them, well, you know, they can even have a vested interest in investing in this. Need not this need not be just charity, or this need not be just generosity. I think that can be quite fascinating. Though it's a topic for another day, it's a large topic in itself. But I'm hoping that you know some of these can happen at the Climate Fix Summit. I welcome you to the summit. This is going to happen on November 25, 26. You're going to be there hopefully four days. But I think one, of, you see, one of the things I want to do there, one of the things I want to see there is this corporate um, VC interactions on especially the deep tech because uh, I know you and uh, a couple of others are also putting together a, a huddle for the deep tech guys um, to have a brainstorming. Hopefully we can get some corporate guys out there as well in the beat. So wonderful, wonderful talk, talk to you about it. Um, thanks for your time and really looking forward to seeing you at the summit. And let's hope that's a starting point for some of these discussions to get into the next stage. Thank you very much. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Looking forward to seeing you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.